There were demonstrations around the country today as unions, asbestos victims and relatives called on James Hardy to meet its asbestos liabilities. The national protest coincided with a shareholders meeting in Sydney. During the three-hour meeting, investors attacked James Hardy over its handling of the asbestos claims and sought answers on how much compensation will be offered to victims. Finance reporter Karen Cho was at the meeting for Lightline. More than 4,000 union members descended on James Hardy's meeting, shutting down 40 construction sites across Sydney. Among the crowd were victims, some former James Hardy workers, as well as relatives, like these two girls who lost their father to an asbestos-related disease. We're here today to let Hardys know we're not going away, we're going to fight there were colourful displays in the other capital cities too. The biggest was in Melbourne, where 10,000 of the city's industrialised workforce rallied in the streets. Unions and victims also bought shares in James Hardy, enabling them to attend the meeting. But inside, calm responses from the new chair diffused some of the anger. We do apologise, and, and I do hope that that apology will be accepted in the spirit in which it is offered. But unions believe the only way to say sorry is to offer unconditional payouts to victims. A lot of uh, empathetic noises have been made uh, concerning the victims, and uh, that's a positive thing, of course, but there is nothing new in the form of concrete financial commitments. This is one of the worries. That if people think there's a big pot of gold there, they, a lot of people you know, want to go for it. My whole um, philosophy today, my whole corporate governance outlook was victims should be number one, profit should be number two in that order. Public anger directed towards James Hardy has brought about a gradual shift in the way the company is approaching its asbestos liabilities. An apology today and repeated statements from the company that it has a moral obligation to victims is a far cry from harsher comments earlier this year that it has no legal responsibility. One issue on which James Hardy is not budging, at least for now, is its support of Chief Executive Peter MacDonald. He could be facing fraud and other criminal charges over his involvement in setting up the original compensation fund, which has a shortfall of $1.5 billion. Mr MacDonald has been with the company for 11 years. We know him uh, and uh, uh, we trust him. The company also offered its first defence over the decision to cancel almost $2 billion in partly paid shares, which would have contributed to the fund. It was an innocent action in the context of an enormously complex transaction. Shareholders wonder why the company didn't speak out sooner. I think the company has been a little bit too slow off the mark to put the reasonable and legitimate uh, point of view of the company and to put things in perspective which means a lot of uh, wilder allegations have sort of got rooted in the community. A special commission of inquiry established by the New South Wales government is due to hand down its report on James Hardy next week, but the Premier seems to have already made up his mind. James Hardy has foregone any right to meet with me, given the disgraceful way they deceived us, other governments in Australia, um, uh, ultimately the courts and the corporate regulators. Similar protests are planned at the company's annual general meeting in the Netherlands on Friday. Karen Cho, Late Line.